we conclude by saying that no amount of training in leadership, in leadership skills or management methods that can ever substitute for the right attitude. So we should focus more on attitude. If you get it right, that is the end of it. The rest is just some technical issues. Now, when we discuss the five practices or characteristics of an outstanding leader, we need, there is this research that was done by Causes and Bosna. Uh, this research is the benchmark of all leadership research. So they came up with it was done on a population of 1.5 million all around the world, in every continent, in every country. Now they came up with conclusions. So this research of uh, Causes and Bosna, it's a detailed research that, they said that has been conducted and it was done over 25 years. You can imagine. It has been done over 25 years. It was done on 1.5 million. So the validity of this research, because nowadays when we have to address certain issues, we do research. Yeah? We don't jump to the conclusion. The research is done when done research. That now forms the basis, it informs us about what is going on, what are the conclusions. Now this research, the validity of this study is 97.4%. And it is the highest result in the entire world on leadership. So in this research, they have identified uh, five character traits or practices by exemplary leaders. And uh, as we shall see, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him has all these five and many more. Despite the fact that these people who did the research were not Muslim, it was just a research for leadership. The outcome of the result with regard to the practices of an effective leader exhibits that all these character traits are enjoyed by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and many more. So the research question was what are the characteristics of a leader that you will be following willingly? Not that, that was imposed on you. Because in such scenario, you don't have choice. This is the research question. What are the characteristics of a leader that you will be following willingly? That's in the entire world. And the result was as follows. This was the result. That is from 1987 to 2013. Credibility was number one. Forward-looking, inspiring, competent, intelligent. Credibility was number one. So now what's credibility? Or integrity, in other words, what is it? It is truthful and trustworthiness. Truthful, being truthful. And being trustworthy. Observed by one of the characteristics of Prophet Muhammad, even before he became a prophet, a Sadhu Bulamin, a Sadhu. That's truthful. Al Amin is trustworthiness. He acquired this characteristic even before he became a prophet. The Arabs call him a Sadhu Bulamin. 
Do they have in mind Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam causes al Bosna and I mean uh, Bosna? No, they don't. So characteristic number one that's credibility. Uh, more than the way. So what shows now this? We give some examples. I think we have some 18 minutes. We will be able to just manage the remaining part. So you need to clarify when it comes to credibility or integrity. You need to clarify, you need to have values. I usually stand for those values. Yeah. If you don't have values, you don't have integrity. You don't have credibility. So let us take just one example among many examples that we have that the life of the Prophet Muhammad was all about values. It's all about values. Uh, he had that value of delivering the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to all mankind. Despite the fact that he faced uh, resistance and you know challenges so his aim or goal was to bridge the word of Allah you all remember or you are all vast with the seal of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam you remember that event of Taif he was in Mecca his followers have been persecuted persistently. They have been uh, beaten, they have been tortured, and speakable things have been done by Quraysh. So what made even the matter worse was when the uncle of the Prophet Sallallahu Talib passed away. Khadija, Umar Mumini, who was comforting the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, passed away, it is called the year of sorrow. Then he went to Taif. What happened is well known. He has been returned. He has been pelted with stones. He came back. On his way, the angel of mountains approached him. If you give me this order, I will smash them with, two, with these two mountains, the people of Taif. What was the response of the Prophet of Anderson? Or in such scenario, what would be our response? Yeah, they are, these people they are really disturbed to me. So let us extend them. Let none of them you know be alive. But the Prophet of Anderson said, I am waiting from their part, those who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he had that wrong vision. Doesn't want it to revenge. So that is one of the examples. You should not be overtaken by events and that your revenge. A leader is not that one who revenge or retaliate. A leader is he who is patient. These are just challenges. These are not even problems. These are challenges. So tomorrow, these challenges we are not going to be there. Also, we have another example of credibility. Credibility, in other words, it means what you say, your actions and your words should go together. You should not say something and then act the contrary. Somebody say, you don't preach what? You don't preach water? And take what? That's what they say. 
You are threatening your youth now. So don't tell people, don't do this. At the back, you are doing. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, So your actions and your words should go together. So there another example is that you know they have lived a lot of difficulties, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions. It was only just the last two years of his life that things were away. They have suffered. Hunger has frightened them. So, in the summer, one night a worker came out of his house because of hunger. So, he rubbed a stone on his stomach so that at least he could get it, he could pressure it and get some relief. That is the status of Prophet and his companions. At the same time, same time also came out. He was also put a stone here. He rapped. Then they said, where do we go? Life has been so harsh. Then they are going to bring someone and sell him. They have showed him by removing their shots. You see, Prophet, this is what's happened. Out of hunger. The Prophet also showed them that he has two stones, not, uh, not one. He has two. What does that mean? That you should lead the life of your followers. It doesn't make sense that you are living in a high standard life and your followers are just down there. And you tell them, you talk to them about integrity or credibility. It, it means you don't have that character. Leaders also inspire shared vision. Leaders look for what? They have vision. That vision they share with their followers. If you don't have the vision, or you know nothing about it, it's like you are must. So followers will follow you nicely or actively if you have shared with them your vision and you have inspired them. So you should talk to them about bright future. You know the law, the journey is too long. The journey to reach the apex of the mountain is too long. So some people may give up on the way. So you have to be a source of encouragement for them by inspiring them. By telling them that success is so near. There is a bright future. Yeah. That is one of the qualities of the, a good or uh, an effective leader. And this is done by describing the future and by making the people that the future is true. Another character trait is that you should challenge the process. Leaders do not fear challenge. They look for it. They seek challenge. They continuously review their processes. There is nothing called like status school. No. You think about it. How do you do that? How do you challenge the process? You will challenge the process by searching for opportunities. Yeah? You look for opportunities. The same example we gave. When the Prophet was tired with the Mecca people, he sent the nearest town around this time. So there is a may there maybe there is an opportunity. Later on in time, it has backfired. 
But the Prophet said, some of the Sahaba he said to them to Ethiopia, Abyssinia, and also he was looking for other opportunities so that these people they cannot resist this torture. So he's thinking for them, can I look for another opportunity elsewhere? So he sent them to Ethiopia. Also himself, he footed to Taif. So a leader is a risk taker, in other words. He looks for opportunities. He takes risk. And what happened in Taif? Huh? He went there, not guaranteed that he can come back to Mecca. Not having the support of his army, because he has passed away. The people of Thai say, if you are prophet, in summary, they say, uh, we cannot seek with you, because if you are prophet, you are of higher rank. If you are not, you are of lower rank. So in conclusion, he has been turn away from Taif. And they sent their you know, slaves and the mad people to throw stones at him. You can imagine. All that is to look for opportunities. Later on, they ended up in Medina. So a leader is that who looks for opportunities, who takes risk. A leader is not that who fears risk who wanted things to remain at the status quo. So it is by searching for opportunities, the Prophet has some search for that opportunity so that his followers will be maybe in safe hands, maybe in a good environment that they can propagate the word of Allah. By experimenting and taking risk, he did. Himself, he footed there, he took the risk. The result was not that good. 